Both Studio One and Ableton Live are powerful DAWs, but I wanted to put them head to head to see which one would come out on top. Now to keep this completely unbiased, I got a hold of Seth over at Velvet Ear, who is a professional Ableton Live user, and he's gonna show off all of his favorite things about Ableton Live and all the things that he wishes that they would change, and I will do the same with Studio One. If this is your first time here, I'm Andrew Barth, producing In The Box, where I teach you how to make incredible sounding music without analog gear, and I think you're better off without it. Now Seth is a guitar-based pop producer, and he is a phenomenal musician and producer. I will make sure I leave the link to his website and his YouTube channel in the description below. I'll let him show off all of his favorite features and all the things that he wishes they would change in Ableton Live, and then make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to show you everything about Studio One, what I love about it, and what I wish that they would change. Hi, my name is Seth. I write and produce music under the name Velvet Year. Thank you so much, Andrew, for having me on your channel. For those of you that don't know, I have a YouTube channel where I recreate guitar-based pop music from scratch every single week. And I've been a hardcore Ableton user for a long time. And there are some things that Ableton, I feel, really excels at. The first thing that I think sets Ableton apart as a DAW is the Finder window, which is this guy over here. And the reason why so many people who use Ableton love this window is because it looks through your computer and will show any search results that you need, from plugins to individual samples inside of sample packs, loops, everything just shows up here. And it makes it really easy to find what you're looking for. So if I'm in the middle of writing something and I have a specific plugin that I want in mind, I hit Control F or Command F if you're on Mac, and I can just type in the name of the synth that I'm looking for, double click on it, and Ableton will create a new MIDI track with that synth on it. This kind of workflow makes things go by really quickly when you're in a song writing session and not get bogged down by the act of trying to find stuff. And it gets even more powerful with the second thing I love about Ableton, which are the racks. Something that Ableton decided to let you do, which is really awesome, is if you hit Control G, you can group them into what's called an audio effects rack. Or if there's a MIDI instrument, it's called an instrument rack, which doesn't sound like that big of a deal. But the big thing here is you can actually hit save and you can save this rack as a .adg file. Since Ableton has this unique plugin format with things going from left to right, and there's no real slots to be used, I can literally just take this effects rack and drop it in anywhere. And it will add all of the plugins in on that setting without removing what I already have there. Which personally for me was really frustrating when I was using Logic because you can make chains and presets and stuff like that. But if you select one of them, it will remove anything you already have on the channel strip. Being able to have these complex effects racks be simple drag and drop solutions that I can drop anywhere on my chain very easily is such a time saver. Also with these racks, they have programmable macro knobs. So if I wanted to, I could map the depth knob of Soothe to this guy, the amount knob on MoTT to this guy, and any other knobs in my chain that I know I'm normally gonna be tweaking. And so by the end of it, I have this insanely useful chain where all of the controls that I'm actually adjusting are right on the front and they're super accessible. Another thing that I absolutely love about racks is that since these are being saved as a .adg, something that I found to be very useful is getting something like a stream deck from Elgato because what you can do is take one of these open hotkeys that are used for opening applications, tell it to open one of your .adgs, and now on my stream deck whenever I click this button within a few seconds it will automatically add that synth or whatever I have in that .adg. And then the last thing that I really love about Ableton is the Max for Live stuff. For anyone who doesn't know Max for Live is a software development platform that Ableton has for their community in which they allow their users the infrastructure to essentially create their own plugins. There's a whole community of people making effects plugins, different MIDI effects, and have even created whole synthesizers on this platform. Some of these community created plugins are now actually official releases in Ableton itself. Whatever weird sound design thing you need, there's a chance somebody has already made a Max for Live pack for it already. So I've talked about everything that I like about Ableton. Now it's time for me to talk about the things that I wish they would do differently. The first thing I would say is Ableton is not that fun to mix in. So you have arrangement view and session view here. And while it might look mixer friendly, this session is really made for DJs and people who are doing live set stuff, these are not plugin slots. These are for live looping purposes. So really, if you're not using this for live mixing purposes, this entire upper space is kind of useless to you. So a lot of people tend to do a majority of their mixing in arrangement view, which is also not that fun because you don't have a fader. You have this little blue bar that you kind of just have to drag up and down. And all of the sends are kind of the same way. So there have been multiple times where I've been in a mix and I have like maybe seven sends 
and I'm like, okay, I wanna add reverb to something. And I literally have to go down here and count how many sends that I have so that I can count the boxes to try to find the right one. I know that's a small gripe, but it, it happens often. I just wish that in addition to arrangement view and session view, they would have like one mixer view. That's just a simple Studio One Logic style mixer window. Another thing that I really hope Ableton changes in the future is the fact that they currently do not support ARA2. For anyone who doesn't know, ARA stands for Audio Random Access. So in Ableton, if I want to use something like Melodyne to pitch correct a vocal, I have to go to the vocal, add it on the vocal track, hit transfer, and then hit play and record it in. Whereas with ARA2, I can literally drag the plugin on it and it will scan any audio on that track into the plugin in a matter of seconds. Even though I love Ableton and I love making tracks in it, I end up pretty much exclusively recording and editing vocals in Reaper, which does have ARA2 support. Right now, that workflow enhancement, it's kind of so good that I can't say no to it. And then the final thing that I think needs to change in Ableton are the customization options. Ableton does have a lot of customization options. The problem is a lot of the things that you can control in Ableton are very surface level. I would love it if they had the option to control keyboard shortcuts on the back end the same way that you can in Studio One or in Reaper, where you can literally click an action that takes place and create a key command for it. There have been so many times where I've been doing something in Ableton and there's been like some action that I'm doing, like adding colors to tracks or things like that, that I just wish so badly had a key command for them, which sounds super nitpicky. But when you're somebody like me and you're doing this professionally and you're doing five tracks a week, stuff like that really matters because now for every project before I move to the mixing stage, if I want all of this stuff organized and color coded, I need to spend like five to seven minutes doing it by hand for all of the tracks and naming them in a certain way. Whereas in Reaper, I know I could be doing that in like one to two minutes and that adds up per project. So those are my thoughts. Back to you, Andrew. Now it's time for Studio One. Let's jump on into Studio One and I'll show you all of my favorite features first. Now, one thing I love about Studio One is that it's completely drag and drop. Everything in the software is drag and drop. You can drag and drop presets in here. You can drag and drop different instruments in there. And I'll just show you an example here. So I have a preset for Pro EQ. Now, if you want free Studio One presets, I have a link down in the description below. You can scroll down right now and click that link and just tell me where to send those presets. They're completely free and they use the stock plugins inside of Studio One because they're just fantastic. So this one preset, which you can get for free, I'm just gonna click and drag it onto a channel. Now I don't have Pro EQ pulled up here, but as soon as I click and drag this preset, it automatically loads the plugin and loads that specific preset. Now this specific preset is designed to make room for the kick drum inside of a heavy mix. You just side chain this to your bass. Now let's say I already had Pro EQ on and I wanted to just drag and drop this preset onto this specific plugin. I can do that as well. So now I just have a blank canvas here. Now I can drag and drop this preset directly on there and it automatically loads it. Such a handy feature. Now it can do more than just one plugin. You can have an entire multi preset inside of Studio One. You can also get these presets for free as well. So I can just click and drag this onto a channel and it includes the entire effects chain. Instantaneously loads and now I have this entire effect chain directly on the channel. It loaded every single plugin and every single preset inside of it and it was an easy drag and drop. You can open up the instruments and you can go through different instruments here and you can just click and drag and it'll automatically create a channel and add that specific virtual instrument to the channel. Everything inside of Studio One is drag and drop. If you think you can drag and drop it, you can. It makes my workflow so fast. Now, another thing I like about Studio One is a thing called music loops. These are essentially presets, but like on steroids, it's incredible. So let's say I have the soft piano here and I'm liking the chords, I'm liking everything that I have on the piano, I'm liking the, the specific preset I had inside of my virtual instrument. I could just take this, drag it over to a folder I created on my desktop, and then you can see that there's a little X next to a thing called music loops. If I click Alt, it'll just drag over the MIDI file and copy the MIDI file to that. But I wanna actually copy over the entire music loop. So now that I have that music loop, let's say I wanna bring in those chords, but I also wanna bring in that piano, that exact preset that I had, I can even bring it into a different song. All I do is take this, find it, and bring it in. It automatically makes a track, brings in the specific chords, and all the presets that I have. Brings in the virtual instruments and anything I might have had on that channel. 
it's incredible. It makes my workflow super fast, especially when I'm in the studio trying to make music and trying not to be so techy at that time. So another thing I absolutely love about Studio One is just, once again, everything is so quick and efficient. If I just open up the mix window here, I can click this little channel editor icon. And now I have basically everything that I could possibly need inside that channel right here inside of this one window. So I can see my cue mix, my sends, all of my inserts, which are my plugins on the channel. I can see the volume fader here. I have a pan knob. I also have the inputs where the output is. I can flip the phase. I can do a lot of things right here, but I can even go farther. If I just click once on a plugin, it opens up a little window here and I can adjust a plugin right inside of this little window. This even works with third party plugins. You just click once and now there's different little slots here that you can put whatever you want on. So if you just right click and click set up macro edit parameters, now there's all of these different things that I can add to that edit window. So let's say I wanna add the master out level. I could just click add, and there it is. Let's say I wanna remove slot four, three, two, and one. Uh, let's say I also want the master delay there too. So now I have those, and now I can adjust those right in here. It is super handy, and I don't even need to open the plugin to adjust multiple things at once. I can just open everything right up here in the channel editor. All right, now for the things I hate about Studio One. I wouldn't say necessarily hate, but just things I feel like I'm lacking or things that I would really like to have. So the first thing is that there's no integrated Dolby Atmos support right now. So if you want to mix in 7.1, you're going to have to find another DAW with that integration built in. This isn't something that I absolutely need. It's just a nice to have, and I would like to upgrade eventually to something like that. And I know a lot of producers out there are starting to mix in 7.1, especially if they're like scoring films and such, and that would be a nice to have. Now, number two, this is kind of a third-party CPU hog. If you're using stock plugins, you're fine, but as soon as you start to drag in third-party plugins, it's a little bit more CPU intensive. Now, I tested this with different DAWs, and Reaper actually came out on top because Reaper seems to utilize a lot less of your CPU. This kind of seems to be a CPU hog. I don't really notice it too much because I have a pretty powerful PC, but if you're running like a dual core processor, you're probably gonna notice some problems, even maybe a quad core processor. And now the last thing, and I really wish that they would change this, is that I can only quantize up to 1 64th. I would really like to go a lot higher because if I'm trying to come in here and edit inside of the grid, that's about as small as my grid can go. And I'd like to go farther so that way I can add like flams and stuff like that and actually add it to the grid. It just gives me a little bit more control to make things sound a little bit more human, but I still get to snap things to the grid where I like them. I know in Logic, I think it went up to like one over 128 and that was nice. But if I wanna put the grid faster, I almost have to basically duplicate 100 BPM to 200 BPM and then bring this back down to 164th and then I can have that. It's just kind of a pain and I really wish that they would add just a few more grid sections. So I wanna thank Seth for showing off everything about Ableton Live. He is a phenomenal producer, so make sure you check him out. I left a link to his website and his YouTube channel down in the description below. And if you're looking for a life-changing mixing trick, look no further than this video right here. If you wanna know exactly what I'm talking about, click here and I'll see you over there. Now as always, go create.